Next up is a workshop about Apache Beam, uh, specifically how to get started with Apache Beam. So this is going to be a very interesting session if you want to write data pipelines in Java, in Python, and Go, in SQL. And the workshop is not give, given by me. It's presented by Austin Bennett. He is a cloud architect at DISH. Um, and he is also a cognitive linguist and researcher with interest in multimodal communication. Now, I don't know what that is, but I, he's pretty uh, enthusiastic about Beam. And um, yeah, looking forward to the workshop now. Thank you. Oh, hello, everyone. All right, let's, oh, where am I gone? All right, um, cool. So this is uh, first steps with Apache Beam. Uh, we're going to walk through uh, writing supportable pipelines uh, with Java, Python, and a little bit of Go. Uh, more enthusiastic about Go than where it's at at the moment, but we will see that. So um, what we will cover today. I will walk you through an introduction. Uh, here's what the uh, Beam is all about. Uh, let's get an overview. Um, let's certainly get hands-on. That's a uh, prime takeaway. I hope at the end of this block, you guys feel comfortable using uh, Beam. Uh, we will take breaks throughout the lecture here for exercises or what we call katas. Um, and then we'll dig into some of the windowing and time semantics, some about uh, triggering and streams and also side inputs. Uh, I mentioned all of these things, but ultimately we're gonna go through them very briefly. Um, these things get quite advanced and I'm hoping to expose you to the fundamental building blocks that you need uh, to start being proficient. Uh, naturally, we can't do it all in this short block. Uh, and then finally, we'll wrap this up just sharing some opportunities, ways to get involved with the Beam community, as well as uh, you know some great things if you know Beam and uh, otherwise. Um, cool. So um, shameless plug, at least at the moment, um, both Max and I help with organizing Beam Summit, a couple day conference in August. Wanted to alert you if you guys uh, like what you're hearing around Beam and makes sense, uh, check it out. It's free and uh, and whatnot. So cool. Anyways, um, these exercises are going to be hands-on. Uh, they hopefully you guys have received a uh, pre-email. Uh, but ultimately, please download IntelliJ or PyCharm. Uh, so in the event, uh, well, hopefully you can install either the community editions are free. You can use PyCharm edu edition edu, or you can um, use any paid version that you have. Um, this is a link here, and maybe we should put that in the Q&A room um, and pin that otherwise. Uh, beam.apache.org slash blog slash beamkata releases. These are a community resource in general for uh, getting hands on with Beam. So uh, we'll walk through setup, but encouraging while this is going on, uh, since downloads may take a few moments, uh, try to download some version of IntelliJ if you want to use uh, Go or Java specifically, or Py uh, you can also use Python in that or get PyCharm if you only want to use uh, Python. Um, cool. All right, so uh, before we can get hands on, you guys should probably know what Beam is about. So I'm going to walk you through the programming model and the vision for uh, the project. OK, so the Apache Beam vision is to be an open source unified model for defining data processing pipelines, which allows you to write the pipeline in the language of your choice and run it with minimal effort on the execution engine of choice. So there's a lot of things there. So I'm going to slowly walk through and unpack that for you guys. Uh, 
So, I mean, specifically, hopefully we have a sense of what data processing pipelines are, but even starting there, uh, what's a pipeline? I think we don't mean these sorts of pipelines, but ultimately um, for data where we have some sort of, say, input, we may do some sort of transformations, and uh, then we get to an output. Uh, so a simple beam data processing pipeline uh, starts with a source. Uh, oh, I can't click there. Uh, that gets read into what is referred to a, as a P collection, so parallel collection of elements. Uh, we perform P transforms, so parallel transformations uh, into, say, another P collection, maybe do another transform, which uh, gets uh, stored as a P collection and then written out to some sort of sync somewhere. Um, so we can get into the um, more specifics, but again, in Beam, what is a pipeline? It is a directed acyclic graph of data transformations that are applied to one or more collections of data. So again, as we said, in Beam, P transformations, parallel transformations, P collections, the collections of data. Uh, these can be either unbounded, uh, so streaming or bounded. Um, the super cool thing about Beam is the sort of transformation logic often that you're doing has no basis. Uh, I mean, you don't need to worry about whether or not it's uh, bounded or batch data or unbounded slash streaming data. Um, pipelines themselves can have you know, multiple sources as we see here and or multiple sinks and can do any sort of uh, drafts there. Um, so uh, the graph gets optimized based on the code and gets submitted to the uh, runner of your choice. So again, I'm already, I guess, talking ahead to the P collection and P transforms. This is probably beaten in already by now. Uh, so ideas around here's are again, sources and maybe combined. Um, we can, and, uh, you know, various forms of distillation, uh, ways we can partition data here or uh, combine. Um, so that's, roughly what data processing pipelines are. So what do we mean by this unified model? So this is the cool thing where, again, we can have batch processing or stream processing um, through Apache Beam model as well as its SDKs, and we can run that on many of the runners, any of the supported backends. So that uh, we probably already had a few sessions around Apache Flink here, um, Apache Spark is another well-known one. There is a direct pipeline, which really just use it for testing. Uh, don't try to write production jobs with it. It is not meant to, uh, uh, isn't certified for scalability. Um, and then naturally, Beam is often conflated with Google Cloud Dataflow. Uh, to use that managed cloud service, you would write Beam jobs and submit them to the uh, Google Cloud Dataflow backend. Uh, so Beam is the um, you know SDK layer there. Um, Beam allows you to use the language of choice. Um, so we can we're going to talk about especially Python and Java. Uh, there are some Go examples to work through. Uh, recently. Kotlin has a bunch of katas available, so I'll also show you those. I'm not a competent uh, uh, Kotlin developer, so I can't speak to um, writing that too well, although I look forward to playing with it, uh, something that maybe you might prefer over Java. Um, there's also Beam SQL, and you may recognize this as Scala, so there is a Scala layer um, open sourced by Spotify called Shio, written on top of the Java SDK. So a different way of looking at this thing, Beam is a single model that supports multiple modes of processing. 
uh, that there are multiple SDKs in various language that you would write and submit to various runners. Uh, so again, these are the more well-known ones, but there are several others. The pipeline runners we can see here. So again, the um, direct runner, Flink, uh, LinkedIn especially runs Beam on SAMSA. Uh, Spark, as we said, uh, AWS had given a talk at last year's Beam Summit uh, showing how you can submit Beam jobs either to their own AWS EMR clusters or to the Kinesis Data Analytics. Um, Hazelcast has a runner called Jet. Uh, Google Cloud Dataflow was mentioned. IBM Streams uh, supports submitting Beam jobs too. And there's a, I think it's just incubating still Apache project called Nemo. Uh, I think that's the range of runners at the moment, uh, at least you know that are well known and still in active development. So another way that this is talked about here, uh, the Apache Beam ecosystem. Again, a unified programming model. It is portable, uh, given you can write the same Beam code and run it on Flink or Spark uh, or Dataflow, for instance. I know that was my biggest reason for seeing the promise, is not being tied to the sort of cluster or um, infrastructure that my ops team wanted to maintain uh, for me. Uh, it's also portable from the uh, language perspective. I, using the Apache Beam model, I can uh, write with a bunch of languages as well as uh, cross language, uh, potentially multiple languages in the same pipeline, which is work well underway. Um, it's very extensible, as I mentioned, supports DSLs like SQL or Scala and has a ton of IOs uh, with a ton of the major open source uh, data stores and APIs, as well as uh, integrates with the major clouds. Okay, so that was a lot on, uh, you know, saying the same thing like four times. So uh, hopefully that makes a good enough sense. Um, so want to talk about now the intricacies of pipelines themselves. A pipeline can be used, uh, or I mean, is written to describe four things. Um, we're going to use this color code convention throughout. Uh, so what are we computing? Uh, that's going to be the primary focus here. Uh, and then where in event time, when in processing time, and how do refinements relate? So what is the sort of transformations? Uh, then there is also windowing, which is about where uh, that occurs. Uh, there is watermarks and triggers. So when does that occur? And there is the accumulation on how are we uh, accumulating results. Um, this is a very useful link to pay attention to. Uh, I can't pull up that from these slides. Uh, Beam.apache.org documentation, runners, compatibility matrix. So that's also uh, pretty findable just from the Beam.apache.org website or searching Beam compatibility matrix. Uh, this just tells you the sort of uh, functions and what aspects of the Beam SDK are implemented and working well in each uh, of the various runners. Uh, so as you can see, most uh, runners do a rather good job of implementing the full suite of uh, semantics from the Beam SDK or Beam model, I mean, but um, naturally check here if there's questions. All right, cool. That was a bunch of stuff. Um, so I'll give us one second to let that uh, sink in. And I'm also going to check the QA 
room, although I believe that Max is in there doing, uh, cool, answering questions and pointing us to where we want to be. So, um, cool. All right, let's start talking about writing a pipeline. Uh, where are we? And then pretty soon we will wind up getting hands on. So again, uh, writing a pipeline, we want to focus on this uh, transformation logic and what are we computing first? So we can talk about element-wise transformations, which are equivalent to uh, map and map reduce style. Uh, we can talk about the aggregating functions, which then essentially are a re uh, reduce. And there are uh, composite transformations we can do, which is uh, using combinations of various bits. So um, we'll walk through all of those. At a first pass, we're going to talk about element-wise transformations and then get moving with hands-on element-wise transformations uh, that you can write yourself using Beam. Uh, so uh, the primitive to uh, of most things in Beam is a pardo, so parallel do function. Uh, it performs a Oh, much better here. I changed my screen. Nice. So it performs a, uh, I mean, it's how you do things parallelly. Um, write things with the B model and you can see. So for instance, here is an example of an element wise transformation in Java. So we are taking the pipeline. Uh, let's go here. Uh, we have a pipeline that we are creating. Uh, we have an input based on um, our elements, and we have a par do of a do function. In this case, we are creating a key value pair of the uh, what will be the first letter and the word um, based on the input collection of the various supported backends. Um, we'll have some examples of things like this hands-on in a second, so I won't unpack it too much. Uh, we also have uh, element-wise transformations. So in Python, this is just the first letter, take the input collection and return the first letter. So it's as simple as uh, creating a class with a process method and returning uh, what you want. Um, in Python, you will see we use this pipe operator to essentially pipe or chain uh, our functions together in the Unix style. And uh, here is an example of the Go code. Um, again, first letter function, uh, write the function, have a beam.pardo uh, with the context the function and what you're working with. Um, so again, we'll dig into that in a moment. Um, a little bit more on element-wise transformations. Not only is pardus one to one, but pardus can output zero, one, as we said, or many. So for instance, we could explode prefixes and say for the word SAMZA as the runner, we could go S, S, A, S, A, M, S, A, M, Z, A, for instance, where we have a ton of outputs uh, for each input element. Um, alternately, we can uh, um, filter where we have less elements. Um, so cool. That is the bare fundamentals that I think important to know this moment to before I let you guys get hands on here. So I'm hoping um, maybe you guys have had the chance to install um, IntelliJ, right? And we can even uh, community edition. Uh, right, so for instance, searching Google or whatnot, there is this community edition that you can 
download. I'm clearly on a Mac here, um, as it shows. Um, and that will run, uh, download, and then install. So hoping you guys have done that. Um, the next step to look at, I will pull up my version of IntelliJ. Okay, so once you have IntelliJ downloaded, as the instructions um, show in the, uh, let's go, Beam Kata's blog, uh, Beam Kata's release. So in the chat room, I believe we have a link to this. This um, page should show you how to um, get set up, but additionally, uh, I will walk you through that, which is then, let's see, okay. So once you have, say, IntelliJ installed here, you can go to Configure Plugins and look for the Edge Tools plugin. In this case, it's already installed, but you would click the install button uh, to get what you need. Um, you can see I've already installed and played with these last night, for instance. Um, once the Edge Tools plugins are installed, it brings up this learn and teach dialog. So we can go to browse courses. And if you type Beam, you will see we have Beam Katas for Python, Java. Um, these two are very thorough. Um, recently, some Golang Katas have been added. I even wrote one for Flatten, I believe, last week. And uh, I just saw these Kotlin ones. So feel free to give those a shot. Um, I'm unsure how familiar Max is with Kotlin. Um, this is not something I anticipate us covering, but know that it's there, and if that's a language you prefer, naturally something you can do uh, in Beam here. So, uh, you know, for instance, I think this is gonna create a copy, but that's okay. So that is bringing these things up. Um, for those wanting to get, oh good, it didn't actually have it. Maybe it'll figure it out, okay. Um, one thing I, uh, it is possible that for um, in IntelliJ specifically and maybe in PyCharm, um, if you haven't been using Beam before, to use these, you naturally need to install the Apache Beam package. So that can be done by pip install apache-beam, or you know, as you can see here, I'm I'm noticing an error, and I'm uh, and I can use uh, let's let that come up. Oh, it did eventually find it. So I did have it on my system, but that is, uh, that's a common problem otherwise uh, when you're trying to do this. Um, so 
I am hoping that in these various exercises that we can walk through, uh, that you guys essentially get set up. Um, uh, let me uh, delete these already existing ones, but I'm hoping that you guys have the environment set up. Let us know if you have troubles and uh, we're here and should be able to help debug. And otherwise, uh, please try the intro, which is just a beam.create to get things up and running. And from there also, please do the um, initial parallel do. Uh, so let's I will clean up my environment, but in the Python bit, please try to get through intro here and hello beam. Uh, and also uh, there's many sections uh, in the map section, try to get through just the first part do task. Uh, so I'm going to give you guys a few minutes. Um, I'll set a timer here. Uh, let's check back in. Let's call it 10 minutes to ensure you can download and get set up. Uh, if there's some common questions, I may come back on over the speaker, but in general, uh, I think these are the setup instructions and you see the timer countdown. Please work on these exercises and let us know if you have uh, any questions. All right, uh, let's get this microphone back on. Uh, so it seems like Johannes at least wanted to verify the, uh, you know, what we're supposed to do here since the solution is kind of already in here. Oh, cool. If it's already passing, then you're good to go. Um, let's, uh, I was just re-downloading these. Um, actually, I'm gonna ask, what, uh, what language are you all using? Um, no reason to dig into solutions too much here. Oh, interesting. Uh, well, so real quick, what language is everybody using? Because I don't wanna necessarily walk you too often through all of these uh, languages if you, if nobody's using. Um, cool, let's do both. I figured at least both uh, Java and Python initially. Um, I see both of you here and uh, awesome. It's also fantastic to see some life and response. This is kind of eerie just broadcasting to people. So I really appreciate even just seeing some uh, some messages here. Um, 
Cool. Yeah, let's let's work through both then. Um, let me pull this out. Uh, cool. IntelliJ coming up. I am. In Kata's Java, I hopefully am re-downloading that and indexing. Uh, it is over here. It is loading. Um, awesome. So here is... Oh. Hiding up here on my other monitor. Uh, so we have this loading. Um, since in general Python uh, is a little more simple, I want to run that first, although uh, I need to let this process continue running. It's um, building and configuring the environment as uh, you guys probably experienced. Uh, so that will be uh, right up here. Cool. Looks like we're good with Java and we have Python going, Python loaded. Oh, uh, man, I wanted this to delete, uh, but it did not. So I will, um, I guess, show you the solution here for Python, and I will delete it next uh, after the next exercise so we can work through it together. But it's already saved here, so oh well. Um, so for the introductory task, and again, how to, or I mean, I guess to start, how to use this. Um, for any pipeline, we absolutely have to install Apache Beam. Um, and this, uh, oh, the descriptions have fantastic details. So, you know, follow them. They'll give you some bit on, all right, here's the overview. That one was less useful. Um, let's make this a little smaller. Okay, um, you know, write a simple pipeline that takes Hello Beam, uh, so we can get taken to here's create the create function and how it works, and here is, um, for example, in memory, so we can see we have say Beam dot create, and the important bit here is in an array uh, or list, All right? So. Um, the create function. So this is already passed. I didn't get to work through it, but um, we can see that this is what's needed for um, the Hello Beam. I probably should have just walked through that for the use of this interface since this is probably new to a ton of you. Um, and again, we'll, uh, I'll delete and clear out these. Um, I wanted to have made sure they worked before. Um, so for uh, Python here, uh, the initial parallel do, um, we need to overwrite, this came with nothing here. So we needed to create a um, process method in our class, which is a do function. Uh, we needed to uh, it suggested to use a pardo with our do fun, which we then down here had a to do item here, which was then called beam.pardo, and add our multiply or have the parallel do do our multiply by 10 do fun. And um, the beam programming guide is a fantastic resource. So I'll probably pull that up often and just while you guys are getting going with this on uh, just, you know, Apache Beam Programming Guide. This is your friend. Uh, when I got started working with this, um, I made a point of at least skimming this programming guide 
every few days just to um, sink it in because this really was a weird way of thinking about things for some reason for me. Um, although ultimately, you know, it comes together. Um, so the solution is that simple that it's, um, you know, it doesn't require a lot of weird programming in the sense of things you wouldn't be familiar with, take an element and multiply it by 10. But the point of this exercise is knowing to call a parallel do and with your do fun, which is a, again, a class of uh, beam dot do fun. Um, so again, uh, with the check, it will pass since this was already written. Um, let's see, uh, Johannes though. Um, oh. Okay, and Paul has a nice comment here as well. Uh, so you're creating the collection and apply, yeah. Uh, that's a fair point here on the way. Uh, so, Paul, I take your comment here on maybe we could improve the wording of the katas. Uh, I'm going to even just take a screenshot of that and provide that. Um, I dare even uh, digress a little bit. Um, for those super curious, uh, Apache Beam GitHub, uh, we have our Beam repo. We have uh, the katas are in learning slash katas. And for instance, in Java, this was a core trans, no, this was a common trans, core transform. Uh, this was a uh, map and a pardue, uh, and maybe the task info, task.md. Um, so, Paul, I think you were critiquing the wording here. Um, I think it is, uh, oh, no, this was the intro. So... Uh, I'll find that somewhere. I thought it would be right in here. Interesting. I'm curious why it's not there, but um, <laughs> cool. Uh, Paul looks like you got it figured out. Um, I guess the point I was trying to make is Beam is a completely open source project and even these exercises are. So if there's something that looks like it needs improved, um, Henry is the original author of these katas, the one that made that blog post. Uh, but many other people have contributed either exercises, wording, et cetera. So pull requests are even welcome if uh, you find things that could be improved. Um, naturally, I can't say to whether or not um, you know, there's a madness in the specific wording, but um, making suggestions would, um, you know, it's totally reasonable there. All right, so sorry for that digression, people, but also, I guess, cool to know that this, uh, even this learning platform is wholly open. Um, so I think this walked us through the multiply by 10 do fun and again the um, beam dot create inside of the array. Again, I will um, delete my history so that I can walk through this um, live in the next round. Uh, Java should be hopefully deleted here. Um, let's see. Shoot. Okay. Uh, anyways, and uh, maybe that's because I am logged into uh, where my history uh, is still here. All right, so the for Java. Um, oh, and why don't we just look at this? If you guys are working through and find yourself kind of stuck, maybe I shouldn't be giving you this little answer. So you can see 
if I go through, maybe I actually tried writing some code, but it didn't work, I could get the incorrect answer. But there is a little peak solution, which then pulls up uh, on a bit here, which would walk through uh, what the answer, uh, at least a form of the answer, right? There are potentially several ways of writing things like a split function or getting a first character from a string or whatever. And the katas are just checking the result of the pipeline, which realistically in practice would be all that you care about or primarily what you care about. Uh, so uh, it's smart enough to be able to check that. So um, uh, a goal also for sharing this is being aware of this as a uh, platform so that you can work through exercises on your own. Um, I will, uh, cool. So let's talk through the, um, the hello beam here. Um, so we, there's plenty of text. The overview is usual. We can use create, which is the Java docs. Naturally get used to those. And um, the example, again, as before from Java, here's how to create um, from uh, in-memory data. Later on, we will start working with uh, text IO, a more realistic pipeline where we would take um, a file, for instance, um, which I guess is good. I don't think I have slides. So beam.apache.org IOs, uh, built-in IO transformation. So, so that you guys are aware, Beam doesn't just work with um, uh, Beam does not j only work with local input, uh, you know, in pipeline things. There's file IOs, Avro, text IO, TF records for TensorFlow, um, XML, Tika, Parquet, um, Thrift, uh, HDFS, GCS, S3, the local file system, and then for messaging, things like Kinesis, Kafka, uh, JMS, et cetera. There's a whole built-in ecosystem and then a ton of databases as well. Um, there's formalized IO transformations in progress. If you're curious, you wanna use something, you can follow the JIRA issues. And also um, it's quite extensible. So if you need to write to something and it doesn't exist, if you're used to dealing with the, say, APIs of your given database, but there's not an IO already written, it's something that you can do yourself. So for instance, there's not um, a great Firestore uh, IO at the moment, but it's straightforward enough to work with that API in, uh, in Beam, which is something I wrote recently at work. Um, cool, okay, right. So another digression there, back to the um, Java pipeline. Uh, if I recall, we it was uh, return to do was the example. So based on the docs, we are saying pipeline.apply pipeline, which we uh, wind up uh, having from here. Um, we're applying a the create function that we have, which is uh, creating of the element, in this case, a single string of hello beam. Uh, so the check there will pass, hopefully. Oh, congrats, me. Um, and then, oh. Um, Pardu. So we have our uh, test.java. So in this same uh, vein, we want to uh, use the um, annotation process element. Uh, so we, I think it was to do right around here and write this whole thing. So we have our input. Um, 
which is uh, where we call it, uh, is it the apply transform. So our input is based on these numbers, which are created from here. But uh, we want to apply a parallel do function of a do function, which uh, you know is integers here, uh, where we're processing the element and we're outputting a uh, number times 10. So multiplying it by itself. Again, there's, uh, you know, get to know these docs, parallel do, do fun, um, what you need to be doing here. Um, I guess just to highlight, whoop, let's see what that is, because that should be, uh, oh, nice. Okay, so uh, that should walk us through at least the very basics of our first parallel do. There are a ton of other exercises we're going to walk um, through, eventually spattered in with a whole bunch more information about what Beam can do, and um, then eventually getting into streams. Uh, so um, I guess... Uh, Oh yeah, that's a good question for everybody. That's my that's my thought is to move on, but I would be let's use this for a second as a QA. Uh, is everyone good uh, in general? I will assume without a message in the next moment uh, that we'll dive into some more lecture. Um, cool. Uh, and Johannes, I did just see your thumbs up, but did you, uh, did you get your question answered earlier? Was it, you said it was passing already. So does that mean it was, um, you didn't actually have to type the code? Um, anyways, all right. So we, looks like we have some thumbs up. Oh, cool. You're responding. So that will... <laughs> okay, all the tasks are already done for you. Uh, I guess congrats on completing the course. Um, good job. Uh, I think in that case, there I've I've worked through these on several occasions. Uh, somewhere there is oh I think it might even be no not there. Um, there is a login to a. Uh, <laughs> nice. Uh, I think there's a login to Septic, uh, which is the online course platform where these are stored. So I would imagine somehow using a different user or becoming yourself, maybe. Maybe the like generic user is already uh, 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 already passed everything or the anonymous one. So if you maybe log in, it will uh, kind of remove the history. Uh, I'm unsure. I know I've loaded these on various occasions and it's disappeared, although I'm now annoyed that it's not. So um, all right, anyways, time to move on. Um, we're actually halfway through. So um, yay us. Um, Oh, cool. Max is helping Paul there. Um, all right. So let's get back to the slides. Um, the hope here is to keep peppering in uh, some things about Beam and give you guys um, time. Um, one thing I guess I, again, I really, really want to reinforce is although something like Parallel Do and some of these transformations may seem super basic, but they're actually so... Uh, fundamental, and a whole lot of these um, things when added together, although each of these parts, again, are very, very simple, uh, they add up to being very, very powerful. Um, so, okay. Um, so we just walked, oh, also, you know, feel free to play with uh, exercises, especially if you have multiple screens. Uh, I really like the um, seeing the map, uh, beam.map uh, exercises, because they're fundamentally the same output 
although uh, and accomplishes the same thing as the parallel do. I haven't tried to run um, testing on whether or not it makes a difference from a uh, performance uh, perspective. Uh, cool. Um, all right, so I'm gonna grab a splash of water. Friends of Parallel Do. Uh, Max will answer that, Andrew, and if not, uh, I'll point you to some more resources in a second. Um, uh, yeah. I think you could even go as far as take Andrew, I guess, to hazard an answer who asks how to write this outside of the ED IDE. Um, I think you could even take the uh, Python, for instance, code or the Java code, for instance, and uh, you know compile it uh, or run you know Python script on the script itself. Um, so I we can pull up some examples for that. Uh, cool. Yeah, Ma Max is answering that. All right, let's, uh, the friends of Parallel Do. Um, the SDK has a, how do I go full screen? I guess this is, good enough. Okay, so the SDK has a ton of other element-wise transformations, which actually can get us very far. Uh, we did talk about parallel dos. We talked about uh, filters briefly. We know that we can map and flat map elements. Um, oh, yeah, here. Here's some code examples, actually. Right. All right. So we saw pardus. Uh, we can filter. So, for instance, filtering by, uh, you know, I want to filter things that start with S. Uh, that was a Java example. Here's a Python example. Um, there is, uh, oh, and here's the Go example. So we didn't get into Golang. I didn't hear anybody saying they were worried about Go. Um, another worthwhile point is that Go is not too ready yet. So don't uh, think you're going to write production streaming Go pipelines uh, right now. Um, it's I was just talking with one of the primary Go authors who wanted to make sure to highlight that fact. It is uh, pretty OK for batch pipelines, um, but it's still considered experimental. So I was optimistic in. Uh, in including Go, it is, uh, but it is part of the ecosystem and where we'll be gone. All right, back to Friends of Pardue. Uh, filter example, uh, we can map elements. So you'll see that in the same sort of examples in the katas here. Uh, map elements uh, with Java and or with Python. So this is create that uh, key value pair from uh, a bit. Here is flat map example, for instance. Uh, also a flat map in Python. Uh, we can get the keys, for instance, with keys. Uh, or we can also use uh, get the keys or values out of things. So those are um, many of the element-wise transformations available in Beam. Um, next, uh, just doing element-wise transformation is great. And there's even a, you know, a good justification for just moving and transforming things uh, one by one. Uh, using Beam. Um, I question at times whether or not running a, you know, in this age of cloud compute, whether running a full pipeline is a good idea with persistent compute in the age of serverless technologies, if I'm only doing element-wise transformations. If using the built-in IOs, there's a good case for how it can handle uh, checkpointing, for instance, on streaming uh, runners. Uh, but if not, a ton of the power gets in uh, with 
things like aggregation and you know forms of stateful streaming. Uh, so uh, one of the most common uh, grouping transformation I believe that occurs is group by key. So I'll have you guys work through an example of group by key here pretty shortly. Uh, so grouping transformations again here would be uh, go through and uh, take uh, of key value pairs where we have maybe already split as we did in the past of a single input say of SAMHSA there where we then have a key value pair of the first letter S and the uh, full word SAMHSA for instance. And then if we wanted to run the beam uh, operation group by key, we could then have uh, grouped with the key S and we'd have both SAMHSA and Spark. So uh, here is examples of the uh, Java, for instance, input be, be a P collection and applying to that uh, P collection a group by key uh, and uh, in Python. Uh, taking the input, which is a P collection, and using beam dot group by key. Um, in addition, when we are running group by keys, we also may want to do something intelligent with that. So, for instance, we may want to write a pardo function or a dofun ourselves. Uh, for instance, top in iterable. So, in this case. Uh, we would take the key values we had before. We have our group by key where we do that, but then based on that, we might want to find the uh, most frequently occurring or you know top result. So in that case, we you know could write again a parallel do that looks through each of the values and figures that out for us, um, but. In the case um, that group by key is followed by pardu can often be simplified and optimized um, by leveraging something like combine. So in this case, here's an example of doing the same thing from the same sort of input, but instead running a combined uh, per key. Oh, I hit uh, that. Uh, let's, all right, cool. Um, so that we have that. Um, again, grouping transformations. Uh, then if we're running something like count and compare, uh, could be a combined function that counts words and then is extracting you know, the top however many. Um, we're really able to write any of our own uh, uh, sort of operations that we want, uh, but to an extent, make sure to know the SDK. Um, no reason to write your own if the community's written something that's gonna work for you that has also probably been thoroughly tested and optimized. So of a bunch of the combiners, uh, there are things like top per key, uh, the count per key, the sum of longs per key, uh, quantiles, uh, you know, approximation algorithms, uh, mean, uh, max, mins, for instance. So um, look into the SDK documentation and understand, um, you know, the pieces at your disposal. Um, okay, so also, in addition to the map and essentially reduce operations, just think about how you can combine things uh, together. Um, you know, so for instance, uh, we have multiple outputs uh, that are possible. We talked about that at the very first stage. Um, one second. Um, cool, so a very common uh, reason for using multiple outputs in a pipeline is a form of uh, dead letter queues, for instance. Um, is say the input is not good or otherwise I can't parse it properly. Um, kind of validate things and continue through the pipeline if things are fine, and if not, write it and log it somewhere. So some example code for that for Java is found here. Um, in this case, we're using things like, uh, I can't highlight the code. Okay, so the tuple tags, 
um, where we're trying to process it. And if the validate uh, element is good, apply the success tag. And if not, give it the dead letter tag, which then um, we can, based on the uh, output tuples, um, set up the various P collections for success or dead letters that we want to do things uh, with. So that uh, pattern is also doable in Python in this way, again, where we're trying and accepting uh, here, yielding what we're looking for. Um, and the example here for Go is this. Um, very interesting I find with Go is you don't just write pardus and for instance, there's pardu2 when you have uh, a parallel do function with two outputs, and uh, the SDK supports up to pardu7 um, for the various forms uh, you can get into. So um, I think that's a good amount of bit on aggregating and reusable um, patterns here. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of time to start working through uh, group by key, uh, for instance. And if you also have already worked through that, um, you know, there's a ton of other stuff there. And again, Max and I are going to be here for a while. So I'm going to set another timer for 10 minutes uh, and uh, give you guys some time to digest what was just shared. Um, handle what you need to and uh, do some exercises. Well, so again, we will, uh, let's pull that. Where's my, okay. Oh, cool. All right. I am uh, interesting. I see is this Johannes. Uh, uh, we can dig into that. Um, yeah, let's either save that or Max, uh, do you have a good way to uh, chat or uh, uh, Johannes's question on Beam and NiFi? Uh, I actually don't have much experience, uh, so I don't feel uh, like I am well uh, positioned to talk about it. Uh, so let's hope Max has uh, something he can chat, or I also welcome him uh, coming on stage either now or at the end to discuss your question uh, there. Um, cool. Uh, so we just allocated some time for uh, group by keys. Uh, I am in the, uh, I tried downloading now. Uh, IntelliJ uh, 
well here what do we got uh that's uh possible nina let me figure that out uh in a bit um okay so um since we were having some concerns with uh freshness of our katas or if they were already installed i uh, tried downloading the community edition of intellij to see if a totally different intellij doesn't have my saved history so i'm hoping that is the case but we'll find out here in a second so for the next few moments, I'm gonna hope to walk through group by key as another really fundamental um, bit, and then we'll get into um, uh, streaming semantics overview, uh, like the real reason I think a whole lot of you probably are interested in and care about Beam. It's less, uh, although we all need to do lots of batch data processing the sheer fact that we can learn this single programming model in a way to accomplish both of these tasks is uh, to me super powerful. Um, okay, so let's see. It is loading, fingers crossed. Oh yes, okay. So for who was that again? Um, oh, Johannes, okay, so I, have downloaded the IntelliJ Community Edition and reinstalled following the instructions, and it looks like it has cleared out my um, uh, you know my history, I guess. So uh, let me dig into uh, group by key. So that was what I was hoping you guys had worked through, in addition to whatever else. Again, this is super self-contained, um, so hopefully something that you find value with working through some of these others later. Um, so the task here, uh, again, I'm gonna go through Python first and then we'll go into uh, Java. Group by key, it's a beam transformation. We want to, uh, I mean, I think you guys actually have a good, uh, a decent sense of what group by key is um, that we'll pull up things like this um, group by key documentation in the Python docs. Um, does that pull up the same? Interesting. That's kind of funny. Implement and the hint is uh, pulls up the hint number one pulls up the same link that was uh, already there. So I guess a cue to say, hey, hint, read uh, what we share. Um, but again, as I've shared, uh, the pro programming guide, super handy. Um, think about the primitives that you want to use, and this should uh, pull up a group by key here. So uh, here is the bit. Here's what we're trying to do. Is there code examples here, though? Uh, do fun life cycle group by key. So no, this is... I guess talking about, uh, okay, and then it gets into code group by key. So that's a good um, note for, maybe we could use a code example in the programming guide for group by key. Um, anyways, okay, so uh, what we want to do, uh, we did look at pardus, but um, since we didn't talk about beam.map, uh, so I found this uh, confusing because um, I tend to look for shortcuts uh, when I first did this. So I see a single line here, so I'm under the impression that I would only write a single function. While actually, um, to do group by key, we need a key value pair. So first I need to write a beam.map uh, where let's say I do a lambda uh, word where I'm gonna return a tuple of word at the first character along with the word itself, right? And then I will want to pipe that to beam.group by key. Uh, so, 
again, then the thought is this will create a key of A. Uh, okay, so ultimately we'll wind up with uh, A with then a list of apple and ant, B with a list of bear and ball, and C with a list of car and cheetah. Um, the way these are done, I also had, you know, re reverse engineered this, if you will, or whatnot. Log elements is how the katas are set up to do this. Um, we can get into uh, how to just write these out to text files, which makes it easier to explore exactly what is going on. So let's test um, this here and see how, um, how we did. Fantastic. Right, so again, that was, uh, you know, I get I got hung up by that. And again, if you guys that are working with Python, um, you can kind of chain these all together with um, operations, but it's super, uh, I like the um, Unix pipe uh, delimiters here. So that addressed uh, group by key here for, uh, for Python. And I will now pull up the group by key for um, for Java. Uh, let's go beam Java. Now let's see how we're doing with questions. Okay, and it does look like uh, as that is coming up, Johannes, your question on Beam and NiFi, Max answered in a thread a little uh, below it, but it doesn't look like I guess either of us are that well uh, prepared to speak to that. Um, naturally, yeah, I don't wanna, I like Beam and I don't wanna talk about comparisons to things that I'm not well versed enough because uh, I'm obviously, I guess, already somewhat biased by um, my position here. Um, cool. All right. So here is the Beam Katas for Java, which are, uh, loading. Uh, so that will come up here. Can I close this? Uh, okay, so this is the hello, which we don't want to do. Uh, let's close and reopen. All right, there we go. Core transforms, group by key. Fantastic. Uh, all the way deep in there. And we don't have any... Um, this isn't already done, so we can uh, uh, work through this. Uh, key. Uh, okay. Uh, let's try. Uh, what are we doing here? Okay, so I need to write my uh, uh, my apply transformation, which is a group by key. Pulls up that docs there. It is a uh, let's you know the important thing is the key value um, class of possible values in the Beam SDK. We have a link to that. Uh, the group by key, which pulls up the same sort of documentation. And again, it takes us to the programming guide, which does not have actual code examples in this case, which is also good. I mean, naturally we can, uh, uh, you know, search Stack Overflow and the whatnot. So um, we, by convention, we use input. Uh, and in this case, uh, we want to take input and apply. Uh, we're gonna um, 
map element. Uh, oh, I'm going to restart this IDE just so that it cleans itself up a little. Uh, okay. All right, so let's map elements into, uh, so we need key values uh, of strings uh, and strings. Uh, okay, and then we want to do that via uh, word. Uh, key value of uh, word. Uh, we could do caret or substring. Substring zero one uh, word. So we're creating that tuple. Uh, do I have all of these? Uh, things right. I think I have. That looks right. Uh, and then I want to apply uh, uh, so this is like we did in um, the Python. So we are uh, mapping the elements into a key value of string and string type where we're taking the key value of the first uh, character with the word. So we're creating the key value pairs and then we're applying the group by key and creating it. Uh, so if this gets out of my way, I believe that does what we need. So let's... Oh, uh, great all didn't do what I need. Okay, well, let's see how the solution looks. Input dot apply map elements, key value of strings, strings via word, key value of, um, and group by create. So I'm gonna just count this as okay. Um, this is because I haven't configured Gradle on this new uh, community edition bit for now since, uh, you know, I just installed it to try to get the exercises clear. Um, cool. Uh, Johannes is typing something. Um, so is Paul, maybe? Anybody, uh, some questions that we can answer right at the moment? And otherwise, I will... Um, try to run through some of the basics on streaming semantics and how to think of stateful streaming and reason about it in Beam. But um, let's answer some concrete questions around um, this specific exercise, if any. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, Johannes, let's... Um, Let's save that for some of the QA either um, right at the end or in a, I think Nina mentioned that there's a public room for some of these concrete um, additional questions that uh, either uh, that we can dig into. So let me try to get through the, um, some of the high level stuff to give you the broad strokes of the model for now. And then um, let's take it from there, it looks like, uh, uh, nice. <laughs> oh, Paul, sorry for uh, being unfair. Uh, you're right. Uh, did not uh, did not cover map elements at least in, um, you know, more than me mentioning it for a second. Um, also, I'm, you know, I am kind of jumping ahead and around because I want to give you guys enough of what I think are the some fundamental pieces. Um, so awesome. Uh, and good call. 
as Max says, uh, do funds are everything uh, or, you know, most of what we need, although then, um, you know, for anything custom. And if not, we can, you know, check into some uh, of the built-in functionality. Cool, let me get back to the slides. Um, slides over here. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna take you through a whirlwind of windowing time uh, triggers and that sort of thing. Um, you know, here's just ways to think about it. Um, we're not going to get hands on in the next, uh, what do we got, like 25 minutes or something. Um, so, and then we can dig into some of, I think, I anticipate it sounds like an audience, uh, especially interested in getting these things up and running in um, a real sense. So, we'll make sure to um, find time to discover that. So, um, Given also what it sounds like the audience, I'll try to breeze through these things since this may be um, familiar and I should do some sort of polling in the future to gauge the audience. Um, all right, so we have, uh, you know, where in event time is what we're um, gonna concern ourselves when we're talking about windowing and time um, and, you know, why does that matter? So uh, we may have data we may have data that's big. It may be super big over, you know, lots of days. It might be infinitely big. It's just, um, you know, always coming. So the unbounded uh, bit. So um, especially when it is uh, unbounded or streaming, there may be uh, unknown delays. So an event from eight may come right at eight. It may come at 8.15 there, or you know, it may not arrive uh, as far as event time to our system until you know after 2 p.m. Um, so we walk through the map and uh, Pardu functions in the sense of uh, how we can do elements-wise transformations. That lets us uh, just do things to the elements um, but time is not particularly relevant when doing element-wise transformation. Um, we then, and the most common way of dealing with time is uh, just dealing with processing time chunks. So, you know, historically that was nightly, you know, or daily batch jobs. Um, you know, more often now it is, say, in hourly uh, chunks, and it's really only concerned with uh, processing time windows. So when the uh, events are in our message queue in our system, not, you know, when it occurred. So in the 9 to 10 o'clock block, as well as in the 1 to 2 p.m. block, uh, we may have events from 8 a.m. Uh, so uh, we uh, a different way of thinking about this, and this, you know, hopefully is quite intuitive to you, although, um, you know, sometimes takes a while to reverse uh, thinking from, you know, just taking events as they come versus I want to take the events as they, I, I want to recreate the event time or at least make sense of, uh, uh, like, knowing what happened as it occurred in event time rather than just um, letting things like network delays or a device shutting off and not sending the event until it was turned back on uh, for it to arrive at my system to have a sense of uh, what was going on. So we can also window uh, events. So windowing is a way to divide data into event time uh, based chunks. So we can do uh, um, fixed windows, we can do sliding windows um, as different ways to um, capture things around event time. Uh, we, you know, uh, in the world that I deal with, which is um, s television, so naturally streaming or real time uh, applications, but trying to recreate things like um, user sessions, for instance, to know. Um, bit. So we can't know when a session is going to end, uh, but, you know, have to deal with all sorts of various bits. And again, like I said, clients uh, dying and recreating how to then figure bits out. So um, 
be aware that we can have various windowing strategies. We'll show some code on how Beam handles those semantics. Um, there is also uh, triggers and um, as it relates to stream. So um, I can't help but give a shout out to the streaming systems book. Um, that's over here too, although I don't need to grab it. Um, I really wish um, they had gone with this amazing dinosaur um, cover, which is in the book. But anyways, um, you know, the uh, fish is also quite, um, you know, apropos. Uh, so um, a lot of this stuff is covered in a lot more depth. If you want to dig into um, the way to reason about this, uh, again, just aiming for high level here. So. If we have our unbounded P collections, uh, not only do we want to talk about where things are occurring, um, so we're in event times, uh, but then we want to talk about triggers uh, and for when that happens relative to processing time. So um, for instance, uh, we may want to trigger at a uh, watermark where we don't specify then anything um, too specific. There's just the heuristic sort of watermark that Beam manages where we want to uh, use a fixed, fixed windowing, as we talked about with Windows, and where we want to just sum integers. So here's a way to um, how that starts to happen. Triggers can um, control when uh, we start to output the uh, aggregation um, on the right would be the heuristic watermark because we, uh, which is the default. So essentially, when the um, system estimates that the window is complete, it's hard to know exactly um, when or what to do with the sort of late arriving data. So we do have ways to control that also. Um, and again, on the left here. Uh, is the notion of the perfect watermark, meaning if it captured all data, um, I guess essentially as soon as it became available. Um, so in addition to the sort of heuristic um, watermark, uh, and again, you can see the color coding, right? We're using um, uh, blue for uh, windowing and green for the sort of trigger code, as well as I think that was supposed to be red, but it's yellow for the summation. Um, anyways, uh, oh no, that's right. All right, so we can define our when things are happening if we want to, say, use early and late firings, um, at, which then will help us uh, have additional complete results where we don't necessarily discard. Uh, for instance, uh, allowing late firings at count if we want to update our sums based on that, um, as well as, for instance, with early firings, um, start to accumulate those results uh, as soon as we have them without waiting. Um, these are all sort of um, trade-offs that you'll uh, potentially need to make depending on uh, materializing results, say, too soon that are incorrect, or what to do at what point with um, how late of data. Um, so this is then uh, the perfect watermark, again, is on the left uh, with uh, the heuristic watermark and with that sort of early and late firing code configured. Um, the, hor the boxes there, once they turn blue, are when the trigger winds up firing as well as then the resultant score or summation occurring in each uh, window. Um, so cool, let's not, uh, let's make sure we leave plenty of time. Other kinds of triggers, there's a ton of, uh, we can trigger on element count in a window, we can configure on processing time, we can uh, trigger on uh, various combinations. Uh, can get super um, nuanced with triggers. Um, yeah, figure out the 
how quick and important your sort of aggregations uh, or combinations are, and uh, you know is and how you're dealing with wherever you're um, viewing those results. Um, okay, so also to be aware of. Uh, side inputs is supported. So for instance, is a way to, uh, I mean, I view that as a form of join. Um, you can do, uh, take extra inputs on the side to, uh, yeah, I mean, essentially join. So either um, here in a second, we'll look at some example code for even looking through all elements as part of a collection uh, or here, we can just have the code on screen um, where we're looking at all of the max, grabbing the max word length based on all elements in the collection and then using that to pad all of the words um, for uh, output, for instance. Um, but also, uh, site inputs are common for uh, I need to do some sort of kind of streaming uh, lookup. Uh, so, um, yeah, be aware of that as a very common pattern and something supported. Um, I guess worth mentioning the Scala API Shio. Uh, here's, you know, no presentation would be complete without a form of word count. Um, wanting to uh, say thanks to this is an open source community. Thanks to the people building Beam and that I, you know, took slides from um, that we share. Uh, we're pretty short on time, so I'm going to avoid uh, just sitting here in the last ten minutes, letting you work independently. Um, I'll walk through the next little bits and save some time for questions. Um, you guys all have IntelliJ downloaded now, so. Um, work through those. Um, let's see other important bits. Uh, no kata kata time. Oh, I mentioned opportunities. Hey, uh, I work for Dish. They're hiring. Check it out. Shopify is uh, uh, some guys I met at the last Beam Summit. Um, they're hiring specifically a group at this link here uh, for so senior analytics developer merchant data otherwise uh, search uh, specifically for those that uh, think about flink and or beam uh, and specifically that are going to write beam pipelines um, so i don't uh, i see more and more uh, things happening in that um, direction of companies recognizing and actively seeking those with um, that can write beam pipelines so you know, my natural sales pitch on, hey, it makes sense to learn, guys. Um, Want to suggest get involved. I should make a better slide here, but um, check out the beam.apache.org website. Um, that has a ton of good stuff. Beam. Uh, we went there a ton of time. Uh, you know, here it is. Um, check out lots of, oh, good, we have quick starts for all. Uh, cool. Um, be aware. I think community. Um, check out the contact us. So there is um, the user and dev list, especially are relevant if you're um, trying to uh, use Beam and run into trouble. Uh, hit up the user mailing list. There's a bunch of users there as well as developers that um, may help you out. Um, be aware there's a Slack channel. You can get into the ASF Slack and people may help, but ultimately um, one of your best bets is Stack Overflow. Um, not only because it's great, but there's uh, some of the people actually building it um, use um, that as some metrics for keeping track of uh, you know open issues, answered questions, and whatnot there. So um, that's probably one of your better uh, places to also get questions answered. Um, so yeah, check out Slack, uh, join the community, check out the dev list uh, also. So if you wanna learn uh, directions that things are going or uh, get involved with contributing code, um, check that out. Um, also would love to hear what I can do better. Um, I've offered this sort of workshop a couple times, but if there's some sort of buzzwords feedback, um, what 
what sort of content would be better to focus on, probably work out some of the kinks with install and whatnot, but um, let me know how I can do better. Uh, and uh, closing on Beam Summit again, come check it out. Uh, that's .org, although it doesn't, oh, uh, yeah, uh, check beamsummit.org out and come join. I'm gonna check out the chat room and start thinking about what, uh, let's see, how do I, how do I get back to Slack? Slack, uh, cool. Uh, yeah, that's a reasonable bit. We have a couple minutes. Um, Max, you're asking if we should start the breakout now. Um, yeah, we should have some conversations and answer some questions. Does that mean going into our own uh, uh, room somewhere? And Max, if not, come on into the conversation here also. Hi. Hey, Here I am. <laughs> Great presentation. Okay. Um, yeah, I think um, there were a lot of interesting questions in the in the Slack channel, and um, it's probably easier if we could just go to the breakout room now. But um, I'm also happy to answer questions here if there are more questions in written form. Otherwise, it's probably easier to just uh, like video conference and ask questions directly. That uh, seems sensible. So yeah, I guess uh, can we just say anybody uh, anybody type out a question if you really want one, just bro an answer broadcast to you. And if not, we'll share the breakout room link. Or do we already have that? We do have the link. Yes, I'll post it again. Okay. Yeah, Nina also posted it in the Slack channel. Cool. Uh, so I, I guess we'll end it here then and join the breakout session. Yeah, um, and so for those of you with some questions, come join us there so we can just talk through things. Um, also, since I don't know if uh, whether this was getting recorded or not, I suspect the breakout room isn't, so I can be, you know, uh, share more naive uh, thoughts and whatnot there. So uh, cool. See you guys over there. And uh, ask Max stuff, especially since he really knows these things and is building it.